seeking to please God, do you know what it takes in order for you to please the Lord? For the past couple of weeks, we have been taking a look at the spirit of Christmas, which I certainly hope uh, dwells inside of all of our hearts. We have celebrated the truth that is Jesus Christ. We have celebrated his coming to our world and given us a light of hope. We have also celebrated the power given to us through Christ to be able to stand strong in a world that is shrouded, that is covered in wickedness and in darkness. We're in the sixth chapter of Michael sis from the first verse through the eighth verse. My thought for today is seeking to please God. Now that we have celebrated Christ and now that we have opened up our gifts, mm -hmm. the question that I feel I must ask today is this, what are you going to do now? All right. What are you going to do next? All right. You see a new year we know is just days away in your pilgrimage. It does not stop here. It continues forward. It goes on. Yeah. So again, I ask, what are you going to do mm -hmm. as you keep moving forward on your journey? Yeah. Yeah. My hope every year is that at the end of Christmas, when our hearts are filled with much love and filled with much joy, my hope is that we will carry that love and that we will carry that joy forward with us into the new year. Yes, yes. My hope is that we won't leave that love, that we won't leave that joy that we have during the Christmas season. Mm -hmm. My hope is that we would not leave it behind in that one season. All right. Jesus taught us and he showed us the way in which we ought to live mm -hmm. while we are present in this world. That way being with a spirit that is not of fear, but a spirit that is of power, Yes. A spirit that is of love, mm -hmm. a spirit that is of a sound mind. Yes. Yes. So mm -hmm. my question today is this. Mm -hmm. Will you live in his way? Will you live in Jesus's way in order to please the Lord? Right. In John's gospel, we'll see in the sixth chapter and the 28th verse, mm -hmm that the apostle recorded a moment in time where the Jews, they had a question for Jesus. All right. And this question, it is a very important question mm -hmm. that they had of Jesus. The Jews will see there in that verse, they desired to know what the Lord wanted from them. They asked Jesus there, what shall we do that we may work the works of God. Right. Now I have referenced this scripture fairly often in my preaching. So you may have this verse highlighted in your Bible. If you don't have it highlighted in your Bible, do so now mm -hmm. mark that verse because the question that we see here in this verse, it is very important. So if the question is important in this verse, then Jesus's answer to this question, it must also be important as well. So I want you to highlight that right. so that anytime you come across that chapter, you can see it and know that it is important that you read it again. Mm -hmm. You see here that there are many people like you and me who truly sought to please the Lord. They wanted to know what they needed to do to be able to please God. So just like them, we often ask today, what does God want from us? Mm -hmm. What can we do? What can we give? What does the Lord require of us to be able to please him? What mm -hmm. will satisfy the Lord? What can I do to satisfy God? So we see here in the book of Micah, this very same question being asked of God by those who were of Israel. Mm -hmm. 
that sought to please God. The people who see ask here, with what shall I come before the Lord? They say they're in the sixth verse. Yes, yes. They say, what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Because they were seeking to please God. Mm -hmm. They say, shall I come before him with burnt offerings? Right. With calves a year old? Mm -hmm. They then say here, will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, 10,000 rivers of oil, shall I give my firstborn, they ask, for my transgression, mm -hmm. the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. Look what these people desire here. Mm -hmm. They desire to please the Lord and they are wondering what does it take from me yeah. to be able to please God? Come on, come on. Now, something that is very fascinating about the people asking this question of the Lord is the time in which this question was actually being asked. Mm -hmm. You see, Micah, you may not know this, he prophesied during some of the worst years of the divided kingdom of Israel. He lived in Jerusalem during the worst years of the divided kingdom. Mm -hmm. He lived in Jerusalem during the years of a terrible king that reigned in Judah as well. Right. But this most this message that we find here in the sixth chapter of Micah, it is mostly focused against the unruly northern kingdom that you have heard me preach about time and time and time again. Mm -hmm. The northern kingdom, as you have heard me say before, they were given over to their wickedness. They had turned from the Lord. Yes, sir. And so we will see here in this sixth chapter and in the second verse there that the Lord, he had a complaint that he was directing against Israel. That is again, the Northern kingdom. Mm -hmm. You will see that God was even wondering there in the third verse, what he had done to Israel to cause them to turn away from him, to turn to wickedness. All right. All right. We'll see that in the fourth verse that God considered some of the things that he had done for Israel with the thought being that because he had done good to them and for them, that they would in return be good to him. All right. All right. Come on, the Lord, he recalled that he had brought the children of Israel out of the bondage of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And we will see there that the Lord even said there that he had redeemed them yeah. from the house of bondage. Again, God had done good for them, mm -hmm. bringing them out of a terrible predicament. Mm -hmm. We would then see the Lord. He also spoke of Balak there in the fifth verse and how he prevented harm and danger coming upon the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. For those who are unaware of what the Lord was speaking of there, you can actually find this in the 22nd chapter of Numbers, the story that at that time, the children of Israel, they were journeying through the wilderness All right. and they were completely unaware of the plans that Balak had towards them. Mm -hmm. You see, Balak had heard about what Israel was going around and doing. And so he wanted to get the jump on Israel before they came upon Moab and destroyed them. Yeah. So Balak, he sought to do harm mm -hmm. against Israel. And so Israel was unaware of this danger. And what God did for them was he prevented that danger from coming upon them. All right. All right. Now, God stopped right there in the sixth chapter of Michael. Now he could have gone on even more, right? The Lord could have listed off a great deal more of the things that he had done for the Israelites, but he left it at that. Mm -hmm. God had done so much for them. And you would certainly think that because he had done so much for them, that they would again, love him. Mm -hmm. Yet, yeah, As we see in scripture over and over and over again, 
Israel rebelled. Israel turned from the Lord. They turned from the Lord. They turned against him. They stood in opposition against him. And this was something that frustrated the Lord greatly. They would be so good to a people, but in return, they would turn against him. I tell you today that I believe the Lord is still very much frustrated when mankind does that. All right. All I believe right. he's frustrated with the sinner. Mm. The reason why I say this is because God still does a whole bunch of good for us, doesn't he? Right. God is good. Yet what do we do in return? Mm. Are we good to him? Mm. Do we love him? Do we seek to please him? Or do we do the contrary thing? Mm -hmm. Do we stand against him? Do we move in opposition against him? You see, I say this today that I believe that the Lord is greatly frustrated with mankind because I believe that our days today are just as wicked as the days were during the divided kingdom years of Israel. Our days are filled with great wickedness. Mm -hmm. Our days are filled with many people turning against the Lord not appreciating his love, not loving him. As the Lord had done much for Israel, he has done much for all of us, whether we are saints or not saints. Yet, as you have heard me say before, there are many people in our world today that do not recognize how good God has been to them. Many are living their lives in a manner where God loves them, Mm -hmm. but they do not love the Lord in return. And again, I tell you today, I believe that this frustrates. I believe that this displeases Mm -hmm. the Lord and I believe it does it greatly. Yet with that being said, there's still a small minority that realizes that God is good. Just as in those days, there was a small minority that realized that God had been good to them Mm -hmm. and they sought themselves how they could please the Lord. Just as there's still a minority in our world today, who I believe you are a part of that desire to please the Lord. Mm -hmm. So the question remains for some who are in this minority today, just as it did yesterday. How can I return my love back to the Lord? Mm -hmm. What can I give in order to please God? Mm -hmm. The people we will notice began to consider all of the things that they could bring to God that might please him. They wondered there in that sixth verse, if they could present to the Lord burnt offerings of young calves, we see there thousands of rams, they say, Mm -hmm. and tons and tons of oil, they say. Mm -hmm. We see that they even go as far as offering up the fruit of their body, the firstborns Mm -hmm. to atone for their sins so that they could please God. The question that they was asking was, can I give all of these things to please God? Will God now be pleased? Will God now be happy with me? If I give God all of these things, will the Lord be pleased? These offerings, Mm -hmm. aside from the offering up of a firstborn there, Mm -hmm. which I would say is a bit much, uh, but these offerings, they sound very generous. Mm -hmm. They are generous offerings in that they are willing to give up a whole lot. They are willing to give up much in order to find favor in the Lord's eyes in order to please their God. Mm -hmm. Honestly, when we think about it, we could think of these offerings in the same manner in which we would think of giving our tithes and our offerings. What we put in the collection plate, if you will. Mm -hmm. They were seeking what more could they give to please God in the same manner in which some people believe that what they put in the collection plate, 
What they give in their tithes, what they give in their offerings, what they give to the church, they believe that those things will please God, that God will be satisfied with their offering of their tithes, with the offering of what they put in the collection plate. Now, there was a time when the burnt offerings of young calves and rams left a sweet aroma for the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. However, by this point in time, things had changed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The offering up of such sacrifice had become more of a practice of religion than an act of genuine faith. In fact, as shown in the book of Isaiah in the first chapter and the 11th verse, the day came where the Lord told Israel that he was done with their meaningless offerings mm -hmm. and that he no longer delighted in their vain offerings, their vain sacrifices. As I have preached recently, there are many people who believe that the Lord's favor can be bought at a price. All right. Again, there are some who come forward with their tithes and their offerings and they'll raise it up mm -hmm. and say, I want to put this, I want to give this to the church. Mm -hmm. They do this with the idea that such offerings will please God. And because God is pleased with their offerings, that he will bless them greatly, that he will be pleased and that he will love them, that they will find favor in his eyes. I want to make something clear to all of you today who are here now, who are watching and who are going to be listening. I want to make something clear here today that our tithes and our offerings, they don't mean anything to God. Your money don't mean anything to God. As I asked a couple of weeks ago, what is your money going to do for God? Mm -hmm. That offering does not mean anything to the Lord. Right. You see, just because you put $100 into the collection plate, mm -hmm. that don't mean that you're going to be wonderfully rewarded by the Lord. That don't mean that you're going to be blessed. Right. Better think again. Our money doesn't do anything for the Lord. Mm -hmm. You see, our tithes and our offerings in that manner, they help to pay bills. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they help for the believers to be able to continue to gather in a, a single location to mm -hmm. be able to worship the Lord, to be able to grow in the faith. They help in charity and in outreach as well. You see, our tithes and our offerings, what you put in the collection plate, that is for us. Right. That is for the upkeep of the church, mm -hmm. not for God. So instead of telling the people to continue in offering up vain tithes and offerings, vain sacrifices, vain burnt offerings, if you will, the Lord, he desired much more from the people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, it is not about the offering, but about the heart that is behind the giving. All right. The Lord wanted something from their soul, their heart. As shown with Cain and Abel, it is about the generosity. It is about the genuineness of our hearts today. Mm -hmm. We see this as the Lord tells the Israelites that vain religion does not and will not please him. He looks for genuine faith in our heart today, mm -hmm. not the practice of religion. So instead of practicing vain religion, we will see in the key verse for today, which is the eighth verse, that the Lord tells the people that he has shown them what he requires of them, what he requires them to do in order to please him. We're in the sixth chapter of Micah, auntie, the eighth verse is the key verse. We see that in the eighth verse, again, that the Lord tells the people there that he requires them to do justly, mm -hmm. to love mercy, yeah, yeah. and to walk humbly with him. These are the things that the Lord tells Israel will please him. Again, these three things that we see here 
in our key verse today to do justly, to love mercy and to walk humbly, not with somebody else, but with him. Yeah, yeah. This wasn't something that changed over time. We can go all the way back to the days of Abraham and see what the Lord commanded Israel's mm-hmm. Godfather to do just the same thing. Right. To Abraham, the Lord commanded him, his children and his household to keep his way, mm-hmm. to do righteousness and justice. Mm-hmm. Again, in the book of Isaiah, the Lord told Judah, which is the southern kingdom, Mm -hmm. he told them to put away the evil of their doings and to learn to do good, seeking justice and rebuking the oppressor, defending the fatherless and pleading for the widow. Again, to do good, justly, mercy, and to walk humbly with the Lord Mm -hmm. to keep his way. In other words, I don't know if you hear me here today. See, I say this often, but it is only because I want you to understand that there is nothing more that we can give to God than to do justly, Mm -hmm. to love mercy Mm -hmm. and to walk humbly with him. I say it often that we ought to keep the way of the Lord. It is of the utmost importance for the child of God, for the believer to remain in his way. We are obligated. It is required of us. If we desire to please him, then we ought to keep his way. I know that we just all opened up our gifts and that we just gave gifts to people. And I know that those gifts Satisfied. I certainly hope that they satisfied others and that you were satisfied with your gifts. Mm -hmm. I know that we love receiving our gifts, but there is no package that we can give to the Lord that is of this world Mm -hmm. that will please him. Jesus said to the disciples that the Lord requires for us to love him with our whole heart. And then to do justly by our neighbors, by loving them as we love ourselves. You've heard me say that a million times this year and last year as well. I try to put it in every sermon that I preach because it's so important for us to love, to do justly by those who are around us, to love our Lord. That's what we see said here in the sixth chapter of Micah in the eighth verse. As we see here in this week's Sunday school lesson, I believe Paul summed it up best when he said to the Ephesians that we as God children, we should be imitators of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I must ask this question of you today. As a child of God, are you living your life in a manner where you imitate Christ? Are you living your life in a manner where you imitate how Christ lived in our world? You see, we know that Christ, we know that he pleased the Lord. We know that God was pleased with his only begotten son, especially in the manner in which he lived in our world. Mm -hmm. Jesus lived in our world humbly. Mm -hmm. He was obedient to the will of the father. And we know that this pleased the Lord, our God. So if you are to simply imitate Christ Mm -hmm. in the way in which he lived, If we were to follow his example, then we know that we can also please the Lord as well. So again, I ask you today, I want you to do this today. Consider to yourself whether you are truly imitating Christ in the manner in which you are living in our world today. Mm -hmm. Are you really imitating Christ in our world today? You see, I can recall when I was just a boy how I idolized my dad. Y'all have heard me share that several times with you. And in my idolizing of him, I often tried to imitate everything that he did. 
when I was a little boy and I went to church and saw him preaching, I would come back home and I would preach too. Turns out here I am preaching now. <laughs> Still trying to imitate him. Right. Someone will say, well, why did you do that? My dad was my hero. Mm -hmm. I, I admired him. He was a man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to be a man just like him. Mm -hmm. All right. That's yeah. what that's what children do, right? Mm -hmm. Children, they often will imitate those who they admire. Yeah, yeah. Daughters will imitate their moms. They want to be a woman just like their moms. All right. Sons will imitate their dads because they want to be just like dad. Mm -hmm. Children do these things. Younger siblings, they look up to their older siblings. All right. And in looking up to them, they will often try to imitate their older sibling as well. I know this firsthand because I have a brother who often tried to do the same as I did as well. I played in the band. He played in the band. I played trumpet. He picked up a trumpet and I taught him how to play the trumpet as well. So what this makes me wonder today is why do so many who claim to be a child of God living in our world today? Why don't they try to imitate the Lord? We, we say that we are a child of God, but we aren't imitating the Lord, the Lord in Jesus. Jesus being God in the flesh. Yes, sir. We say that we are followers of Christ, yet we don't act Christ-like. We don't imitate him in our way. Mm -hmm. In other words, we don't keep his way. In other words, we aren't walking in his way. In other words, we aren't living in his way. Why aren't we doing this today? We claim to be a child of God, but we aren't imitating him. Yet we believe we are pleasing the Lord in our life, but aren't imitating him. The Lord, Lord himself, and he became one of us and he lived in our world humbly. Why can't we do the same? Jesus, who was divine, he did not act in a conceited manner, but he genuinely loved all people. Why can't we do the same? Jesus, he took to himself those who others considered to not be smart. They thought that the fishermen were ignorant that followed Jesus. To the annoyance of the religious leaders, Jesus, he also sat down with those who they considered to be unsavable, those who were sinners. Jesus, he respected. Jesus, he loved all people, regardless of what the world may have thought of them. Why can't we do the same? Again, I must ask you today that if we desire to please the Lord, should we not live as Christ lived in our world today? Should we not be imitators of Jesus Christ? We say that he is the Messiah. We say that he saved us from our sins. Why don't we act like he saved us from our sins? See, we must be of the same mindset of mm -hmm. Christ. Mm -hmm. We must absolutely be of the same mindset of Christ. Yeah. As Paul stated in our Sunday school lesson this week, if you haven't seen it yet, you will see it. We ought to be of the mindset of Christ. Mm -hmm. We are obligated to be of the same mindset yeah. as mm -hmm. Christ. The child of God that seeks to please him should live a humble life where they not only have a great regard for themselves, mm -hmm. but they have a great regard for all of those who are around them as well. What this means to you is that you should treat those around you with a great amount of humility yeah. instead of with a high disregard. Mm -hmm. We should be empathetic and sympathetic to all of those who are around us knowing and understanding their plight 
and trying to help them with their plight as well. You see, we should also care for the well-being of others and do nothing to bring harm upon them. You see, the imitators of Christ ought to live in a manner where they genuinely desire to lift up all people instead of tear them down. As we prepare ourselves to enter into another year, we can see that the road ahead of us is already filled with a challenge that has presented itself to mankind. We're in the sixth chapter of Micah. That verse was my key verse. This challenge is a challenge that has been noticeably present for the past couple of years yeah, yeah. in our world. Mm -hmm. The challenge being this. Will we treat each other with a great amount of humility or will we continue in our disregard of each other? Mm -hmm. I genuinely wonder about us. Mm -hmm. I genuinely wonder about mankind today. I wonder about us quite a bit as we collectively live with one another as if only our lives matter right. and the others who are around us, their lives don't mean anything. Right. Their lives don't matter. Mm -hmm. Just for a simple example, it seems like every time me and my mom are out and about, people drive with a blatant disregard for those that are around them. Mm -hmm. Something that is very simple, something that is very easy for us to do. And remember, the first rule of the road was that we were taught that we don't drive for ourselves, but we drive for all those who are around us. Mm -hmm. A simple lesson about caring for those that are around us, all right. regarding their lives as we would regard our life. Right. Yet, yeah, what do people do? With this simple task, right. people dangerously speed. <clears throat> people will cut you off. All right. They don't even bother to use their signal lights to Whoa. let you know if they're turning left or if they're okay. turning right or if they're trying to get over into right. your lane. Get it, get it. They do this not necessarily because they are in a rush. Yeah, they may be in a rush, but they don't. It's not because they are in a rush. Mm -hmm. They do this because they simply don't care about you. What matters to them is them. Yes, sir. Their lives is the only one that matters. Right. What they have to do is all that matters. What you have to do does not matter. What you have to get to does not matter. In other words, they disregard your life. They don't care about you. They don't care about your life. Come on, come on, come on. Now, maybe this is just a pet peeve of mine that I just decided that I want to vent out, that I want to share with those that are around me because maybe it's because I'm tired of seeing people drive that way. But all the same, we bring so much harm to one another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We oppress each other. Mm -hmm. We rob from each other. We kill. We steal from each other. All right. All In the right. past couple of years, frankly, we have seen that we have little to no care for the health of one another. We don't care for the health for those that are around us. We will go and purposely sneeze on people. Mm -hmm. I've seen people even spit on people in disregard of their health. All right. Why are we this way? Why don't we care for one another? We don't care about one's physical health, mental health, emotional health, or right. spiritual health. Right. There's a total lack of respect. There's a total lack of love that is present in large numbers in our world today mm -hmm. that cannot be inside of us who say that we are a child of God. You see, when we live our life with such disregard to those that are around us, we should understand that God is not going to be pleased. 
when we don't love our neighbor, when we don't regard our neighbor, why in the world should we think that God is going to be happy with us? Why should we think that God is going to be pleased with us? Such blatant disregard and selfishness and inconceitedness. I tell you today, it is something that the Lord is not pleased with. So as we exit this Christmas season and as we begin our way into the new year, I hope that you will carry the love that we found in the spirit of Christ. I hope that you will carry it with you into 2022. You see, we sing about giving love at Christmas time during the season of Christmas. But I must ask, why should we stop at Christmas? Why should we stop there? We always talk about making resolutions. How about this be a resolution for you today? Love somebody that is not yourself. Why not carry that love with you every day of the year? Loving the Lord and loving our neighbor, that is what pleases God. God is not hidden this message from us as it is plainly explained to us throughout scripture. The Lord requires from you that you act in your faith by him, by truly imitating his only begotten son, by loving all of the people that are around you, those you know, those that you do not know. The question for us today is, will we choose to object to what the Lord requires of us? Will we object to doing justice, to showing mercy, to walking humbly with the Lord, our God? Will we object to keeping the way of the Lord? Will we object or will we be obedient to the Lord's way? We'll be obedient to doing justly. We'll be obedient to loving mercy. Will we obediently walk humbly with the Lord, our God? I certainly hope that your answer to that question is yes, preacher. Yes, pastor. I am going to do it. All we have to do is imitate Christ. And when we do these things, I tell you today that we will please the Lord and we will please the Lord easily. This is an act of genuine faith that is done out of generosity, out of the genuineness of our heart. This is an act that is not of vain religion. This is an act that will please our God. Amen. 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 Amen.